So what I want to do here is have a discussion about the original Supergirl, Kara Zor-El. And what I'm hoping is that at the end of this, you'll have a strong understanding of her character, as well as how she helped to evolve the Superman universe with her initial introduction. Created by Mort Weisinger and Otto Bender in 1959, Kara Zor-El came out of DC's attempt to introduce a female Superman. Because editor Mort Weisinger had made it his mission to add something new to the Superman landscape every six months once he had taken over the title in 1959, and because young women partook in comic books but largely kept their interests confined to stories involving romance, Weisinger looked to expand on the Superman mythos and reel in the young female demographic all at the same time. Looking to the popularity of 1943's Action Comics issue number 60, which saw Lois Lane becoming Superwoman by way of a dream, in Superman issue number 123, Otto Bender set the stage to introduce a Supergirl by providing Jimmy Olsen with a magical artifact. In this story titled The Girl of Steel, an unnamed town is flooded due to a torrential rain. With Jimmy Olsen flying the mobile newsroom, Lois Lane arrives for the purpose of covering the footage, but is thrown out of the helicopter by violent winds. Coming to her aid after witnessing her fall because of comics, Superman rescues her during which time she muses about marrying him. Replying that he and Lois would never work out due to the constant danger in Superman's life and that only a woman of equal power could stand alongside him, Jimmy Olsen overhears the conversation and states that if given the opportunity, he would grant Superman the very Supergirl that he's looking for. Transitioning to a landslide that occurs but is witnessed by Superman, he alongside Jimmy Olsen make their way through the rubble and rescue a trapped archaeologist. Providing Jimmy Olsen with a reward for his efforts, the man provides him with an old Indian relic with an inscription stating that once every century, it grants three wishes to its wielder if they rub the gem. Recollecting the conversation between Superman and Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen uses his first wish to create a Supergirl to fight alongside the Man of Steel. And so with a plane flying out of control the next day, Superman rushes in to save it, but is beat by the arrival of Supergirl. Helping a surprise Superman land the aircraft, Supergirl states that the reason Superman had never seen her before is because Jimmy Olsen wished her into existence after rubbing his magic totem. Working together, Superman shows her the ropes of being a hero and that her initial endeavor involves a safe that has been locked trapping a clerk inside. Using their x-ray vision, they try to disarm the lock, but because of Supergirl's inexperience, her beam crosses with Superman and the vault door explodes. While it doesn't kill the clerk, Superman uses this as an instance to teach Supergirl the lessons of controlling her powers. However, while Superman maintains his dual life of Clark Kent, during an outing with Lois Lane, Supergirl flies by and recognizing who he is by way of her x-ray vision and Superman's suit under his normal clothes. Revealing his identity, Superman becomes angry at Supergirl and refuses to work with her any longer. And so going on patrol by himself, after discovering that a train bridge had been damaged and will cause the coming train to crash, Superman flies in to repair the tracks. However, the villains in question arrive and drop a rock of kryptonite which begins to weaken him. Coming to his rescue, Supergirl picks up the kryptonite, sacrificing her life in the process due to her exposure to the radiation. Returning to Jimmy Olsen, he uses his second wish to end her suffering by wishing her out of existence. Now following this story, because it sold so well, DC took the next step and in Action Comics issue number 252 in 1959, a genuine Supergirl was introduced. In her first appearance, which also came with an origin story, Supergirl crash lands in a ship which was overheard by Superman. Traveling to its source, he finds the vessel destroyed, but is also met with Kara Zor-El. As she explains, during the destruction of Krypton, which saw Clark Kent sent away as an infant, a city containing a scientist along with a handful of others had been flung into space. While the landmass had been irradiated due to the destruction of Krypton and turned into a giant chunk of kryptonite, lead sheeting had been placed on the ground since the radiation can't penetrate lead. Following this, the scientists and citizens survive for several years in a vacuum of space using a food dispensary for nourishment during which time Zorel took a wife. Producing a child named Kara, during their early years, a meteor shower struck the landmass and destroyed the lead sheeting, resulting in the kryptonite radiation permeating the area. With only a month to live, Zorel began to work on a ship that could be used to send Kara away and ensure her survival. During this time, Kara and her mother scoured the spaceways for a suitable location, eventually stumbling on Earth. Recognizing Kal-El as the son of Jor-El and the cousin of Kara, because the Earth's lesser gravity granted him superpowers after which he had served as a superhero, Kara and her mother agreed that this is the best location to send her to. And so with the ship completed, Kara leaves her family behind and is sent to Earth where she crash landed at the start of the story. Following this, Superman comes to the conclusion that instead of starting her career as a superhero right away, instead she needs to spend some time honing her skills and adapting to the use of her powers. Providing her with a secret identity in the form of Linda Lee, she's enrolled in Midvale Orphanage where she's instructed to keep her presence hidden until such a time as she has full control of her abilities 
and the world is ready for another superpowered Kryptonian. Now, following this initial introduction, DC was met with a litany of letters from fans of the Superman series praising the idea and requesting more of the same. And so, rolling our character over as a backup feature in Action Comics for 10 years until issue number 376 in 1969, the stories of Supergirl remained under the control of Otto Bender, with Jerry Siegel taking over after issue number 261. During Bender's run, Kara maintained the identity of Linda Lee, but worked to aid other kids from the orphanage in achieving adoption and in the process, staved off her own. As an example, in issue number 253, she speaks with a boy named Jimmy who reveals that he doesn't think he'll be adopted due to the fact that he doesn't have any talents that would attract prospective parents. Introducing him to a farming couple since the only thing he learned was how to milk cows, Jimmy's eventually adopted, allowing Supergirl to stay at the orphanage. While these stories also saw her sneaking out of the orphanage to experience the world, the underlying theme here was largely self-discovery, both in terms of how great people could be, but also how deceptive they could be. Furthermore, Bender set the stage to allow Supergirl to step into her own character with issue number 258's Farewell to Earth. During this story, Supergirl had saved a boy from a falling tree and in the process, encountered Crypto the Superdog for the very first time. While flying around and seeing the sights, Supergirl encounters Superman, who chastises her for leaving Midvale Orphanage and risking the world becoming aware of her. As punishment, Superman places her in a makeshift vessel and sends her to an asteroid where she's banished from returning for a year. During her exile, she uses her telescopic vision to observe her friends and witness a forest fire breaking out. Taking giant icicles from the asteroid and flinging them at Earth, the ice melts over the fire, putting it out in the process. And so receiving a letter from Superman by way of Crypto, Supergirl is informed that the asteroid will be bombarded with kryptonite radiation. Ordering her to return to Earth, she arrives but realizes that her absence from Earth has resulted in the orphanage sending out a search party. Making her way back, her sudden arrival sparks headlines with various members of the news coming to attempt to interview her. During this time, Clark Kent appears and begins to question why it was that she shows no signs of starvation or injury after she had concocted the story of being lost in the woods. Resigning himself to the fact that she had failed in her attempt to keep her identity secret, Supergirl reveals that she had known Clark Kent was Superman all along due to the fact that she had tried to damage his glasses when he inspected her skin for injuries. After failing to achieve this, she realized that the man was wearing super glasses, which led her to realize that it was Superman. Impressed by her ingenuity in attempting to keep her identity secret, Superman informs her that the entire situation was a test to see if she could keep her identity as Supergirl hidden and maintain her secret identity as Linda Lee. As a result, he allows her to begin accompanying him on missions in secret so long as no one sees her. Now following this, while stories like Supergirl vs. the Superman Emergency Squad and Supergirl's Darkest Day served to expand on her role as a superhero on Earth, DC was also looking for a way to provide legitimacy to her character and slowly continue the trend of moving her away from Superman and into her own realm as a standalone hero. And so with Action Comics issue number 285 in 1962, Jerry Siegel wrote a story that saw Kara being adopted by Fred and Edna Danvers. Changing her name to Linda Lee Danvers, DC set about demonstrating to fans that Supergirl was indeed standalone. To this end, because her biological parents were presumed dead following the destruction of Krypton, Weisinger and Siegel felt that this origin was too similar to Superman. Looking to correct this problem, with Action Comics issue number 305 in 1963 titled The Girl Who Hated Superman, Siegel introduced a series of dream sequences which would reveal that Supergirl's parents were actually alive. Coming to a head in issue number 310, the story saw her parents trapped in another dimension called the Survival Zone. Created explicitly for this story, at its conclusion, Supergirl rescued her parents, but because fans had grown accustomed to the relationship formed between Kara and the Danvers, her parents were moved to the bottled city of Kandor, and Supergirl remained a child of Fred and Edna Danvers. Now by 1969, in order to gauge the popularity of her character, DC rolled Supergirl over into Adventure Comics with issue number 381. As a series that was used as a testbed for popular concepts like Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes in order to gauge fan desire for more content, because Action Comics made it impossible to determine whether the series' popularity was due to Supergirl or Superman, DC had hoped that during her stay in Adventure Comics line, they could develop a legitimate answer to the question of whether or not she was truly a popular character. To this end, underwriter Carrie Bates, DC maintained the element of Supergirl that connected her to young readers, like her romantic relationships with boys, and her life after college. This coupled with the fact that Comet the Superhorse and Streaky the Supercat continued on alongside Supergirl in her new stories, meant that there was virtually no deviation from the content in Action Comics to the Adventure Comics line. As a result, the popularity of her stories increased due to the consistency that came with them. Lasting until 1972 with issue number 424, 
Following the retirement of DC editor Mort Weisinger and as part of editor Julius Schwartz's revamp of the Superman franchise in order to make him more down to earth, the Supergirl title was handed over to Joe Orlando and Mike Zukowski. Looking to eliminate unpopular titles and continue the more popular ones, in November of 1972, DC released Supergirl number one. However, because the new direction of Superman's series was reviled by fans who preferred the massive scope and size of the character in conflicts, the Supergirl series was effectively guilty by association and began to fall out of popularity. As a result, with issue number 10 in October of 1974, DC canceled the solo series. Renaming Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen to the Superman family, Supergirl was rolled over into the new anthology which served to provide a series of stories independent of each other focusing on Superboy, Jimmy Olsen, and Lois Lane, along with Supergirl herself. However, because the continued change in storytelling and the down-to-earth nature of the characters weren't wildly popular among readers, while he remained as editor until 1986, Julius Schwartz was forced to reinstate many of the larger-than-life stories of Superman and the various characters, including Supergirl. Finding a renewed popularity, in 1982, DC elected to attempt another solo series titled The Daring New Adventures of Supergirl. Written by Paul Kupenberg and drawn by Bob Osner, in truth, because Supergirl had spent so much time in the Superman family anthology, DC had effectively turned the title into a victim of itself. While Superman had retained his own solo series due to his position as one of DC's premier characters, Supergirl had constantly struggled under various writers, looking to give her interesting stories that made her separate from Superman in terms of interest, but the same in terms of her powers. As a result, for the first 12 issues, the Supergirl title struggled with mediocre sales, with the publication teetering on the edge of cancellation. And so with Kuberberg staying on as writer and alongside Carmine Infantino who had been brought on to replace Bob Osner, the physical appearance of Supergirl and the title of the comic was revamped. Eliminating the premise of daring new adventures and simply calling it Supergirl, Kara's physical appearance was also changed to the now iconic uniform. Working together in introducing the famous red headband as a symbol of Kryptonian citizenship, the stories of Supergirl flourished with fans welcoming both the more adult-oriented battles and compelling new look. However, with Crisis on Infinite Earths knocking on the door the following year, the title was suddenly cancelled in October of 1984 with issue number 23. The reason for this was because in the eyes of DC, while Supergirl was growing and becoming more engaging of a character for fans of the Superman family, the Man of Steel himself had actually been dropping out of popularity. Using the logic that interest in Superman was failing due to an oversaturation of superpowered Kryptonians which had destroyed the uniqueness of the character, under Marv Wolfman, DC used the Crisis on Infinite Earths event to eliminate the concept of Kara Zor-El as Supergirl entirely. Because the decision proved to be one of DC's most controversial and that longtime Supergirl fans had felt betrayed with the time and money they had spent, and new fans who had just gotten into the character were left hanging, when John Byrne took over the Superman series and was tasked with revamping all aspects of the title, debates reigned supreme when Supergirl was reintroduced as a man-made shape-shifting artificial life form who for all intents and purposes was an alternate reality clone of Lana Lang, the girlfriend of Lex Luthor from the same alternate universe. While the disembodied spirit of the now dead Kara Zor-El made occasional appearances in the post-crisis continuity, between 1988 and 2004, Matrix served as the Supergirl of DC's continuity. While steps were taken to attempt to define her character and replace Kara, including a merger with the human girl Linda Danvers in order to take on a near-identical appearance to Kara, in the end, the Matrix Linda Danvers version of Supergirl was not a Kryptonian and therefore not a true Supergirl. And so in 2004, due to the post-crisis continuity of Supergirl becoming chaotic and confusing from stories involving merged personalities and shared bodies, underwriter Jeff Loeb, DC looked to wipe the slate clean by launching a wholesale reboot of the Supergirl line and reintroduce Kara Zor-El. To this end, during the Batman Superman publications which saw a series of team-ups between the two, Jeff Loeb wrote a six-part story titled The Supergirl from Krypton. Introducing her for the first time as an actual person following the Crisis on Infinite Earth story, Kara's ship is shown to have crashed on Earth, with Batman following her character's accidental trail of destruction as she stumbles throughout the world. Eventually capturing her and using green kryptonite to knock her out, an analysis of her DNA by both Superman and Batman leads to the conclusion that she's Superman's cousin from Krypton. And so for the following five issues, Jeff Loeb continued the series and having Kara inducted by Wonder Woman of the Amazons, pursued by Darkseid to become one of his warring furies, and eventually step into her own as the Supergirl of Earth. In essence, for those of you who had seen the Batman Superman Apocalypse animated feature, that film was based on this story. Now following her reintroduction to the DC landscape, the issue remained as to what would happen to the Matrix Linda Danvers version of Supergirl who had appeared after Crisis on Infinite Earths. 
Answering this question in two phases, DC first began working on building Kara zor up by having her take part in Jeff Johns' run of Green Lantern, which had been outselling Superman in action comics and seemed to be the best place to provide her with the most exposure to readers. The second phase came in the September 2008 story Rain in Hell by writer Keith Giffen, which didn't really kill Matrix off so much as shove her into the closet to make way for Kara zor and that Matrix was quite literally resigned to existing in Hell. Taking the next step of establishing that Kara was the definitive Supergirl, in 2005, Jeff Loeb helped to relaunch the Supergirl solo series, writing the first five issues. During these stories, Supergirl experienced a tour de France in that issue number one saw her teaming up with Power Girl, a version of Kara herself from the Earth 2 continuity, as well as the Teen Titans in issue number two, and Nightwing in issue number four. As a result of these stories, fans were ecstatic at seeing the return of a genuine Kryptonian returning to the mantle of Supergirl, and by issue number three, Sales of the Supergirl comic tripled, selling over 100,000 issues. Considering this to be a welcome reception, DC kept the trend going, and between 2005 and 2011, Supergirl's solo feature lasted until issue number 67, where it was cancelled as part of DC's line-wide reboot with the new 52. With that being said, we're going to bring this video to an end, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.